Hi, today um, I'm going to fill it up with kingfish I caught yesterday and cook it up a few ways and show you how I eat them, I suppose. Go get the kingfish. Alright. Important to make sure the fish is cold, so I either leave it in a nice slurry overnight or I've got a big fridge out the back, I leave it in. Cut his tail off to fit him in the chili bin. Oh, I've got a little snapper in here, I think I'll do that one first. A little snapper. Okay. So, uh, it's key with bled when we caught it. Try and get as much of the blood out as we can. Helps the ugly state he's in. So, the first thing we'll do is uh, give him a wipe down with a clean cloth. All right, sweet. Nice and clean, makes the rest of the job really easy. Uh, nice sharp knife as well, always helps. Don't need a big knife, just a sharp knife. Now I'm going to take this thing into three bits really after I fill it. I'm going to use the tail, I'm probably just going to smoke that to be honest. Uh, I'm going to take the shoulder off and that's going to be something else and then the belly and that's going to be something else. So basically you just take off both sides and then split them into bits. One side, Let's put that over there. And there we have it. One filleted kingfish. So now um, you can eat the liver, which is in here, this bit here. Um, but now I'm probably just going to take the guts out, take the gills out of the head, and I'm gonna chunk it into bits, and I'm going to turn this into stock. And uh, we'll run through that in a second. All right, and I'll do that really fast. Hot. Mm. Best bet. Okay, so that's it pretty much filleted. Um, what I'm going to do now is wash the head and all the bits that I'm going to put in the stock in good clean cold water. Um, 
normally you would never wash sea fish in fresh water it just makes them go off but because we're going to make stock out of this spine and the blood doesn't make the stock taste nice so we have to get rid of all the blood as much as we can so i'll go ahead and do that I'll now throw up the uh, recipe for the stock, just pause it um, and you can see what goes in it and I'm just going to go ahead and make it and you watch and it's pretty simple, it's just basically throw everything in a pot with some water, bring it to the boil, turn it off and cool it down. Oh, by the way, this uh, these wings are really good eating. If you want to, you can see the meat on them is fantastic. If you want to eat them, they're great. Um, just roast them. Fantastic bit to eat, but I've got so much meat, I'll just put these into the stock. Okay, and I'll fill that with nice, clean, cold water. until it just covers the fish. Now I'll put that on a gentle heat to slowly bring it to a simmer. Okay, so I'm just gonna work on one side. You can repeat it with the other side or do something completely different. The other thing, the other thing you can do is you can just cut this into nice steaks and cook it on the barbecue. Just cover it in olive oil, bit of salt, bit of pepper, put it on, cook it 90% of the way through on the skin side, and then just flip it over to char it on the other side. And it's beautiful, you don't have to do anything else. Um, you can even cook it, I have, whole like this on the barbecue. And same thing, 90% one way, flip it over, char it on the other side. And it's yummy, especially feeding a lot of people. That's not what we're going to do today. So first things, um, the bit that I'm going to smoke, which tends to be a slightly tougher section of the, of the fish, is the tail, which I normally pick from the anal line, which is at the end of the belly. So about here. Now that there is going to be for the smoker. If you want to see how to smoke a kingfish or a kawai or any fish, one of these corners will have a link on how to smoke fish. I'll also put it in the description. Okay, so now we've got the two sections we're going to make our bits and pieces out of today. The belly section, we're going to make a uh, fairly traditional Anglo Saxon kind of thing with it. And the top section, we're going to make tataki. If you've never had tataki before, you're missing out. Anyway, we'll go through it. Very, very simple. This one's a little bit more involved. Okay, first thing we need to do is there's all these pin bones from the spine running down the center of the fish. We just need to cut those out. When you face the fish towards you, find where the pin bones are. They go straight up and down and then just run the knife gently down until you cut them out. belly section removed. Now this is what we're going to make into tataki, the shoulder of the kingfish. If you call it a bigger kingfish, this is quite a big piece of meat. What we're looking for is just the loin. So to find the loin, the easiest way is there's a muscle here that you can see and there's a seam that runs along it all the way down. If this is the head of the fish and that's towards the tail of the fish, about two thirds of the way down, there's always a break and you can just put your finger in it. Now if you follow that, you don't even really need a knife, although at certain times you will. You can break that muscle group away from the other muscle group. And that makes it very, very easy to separate out this, separate out this loin section 
away from this top section which can be a little bit tougher. Now, go ahead and do that. The bottom end you will probably need a knife to split it open. Just keep running your finger through it. All the way down. There you have it. That's the loin section. And all you've got to do is nick the skin. Cut it off that way. left with this bit of meat which is a little bit tough and this loin which is super tender also if you want to eat this as sashimi the whole fish is good as sashimi um, but this is my favorite bit to eat as sashimi um, belly is also lovely but you have to peel off all these linings um, and it has a nice layer of fat in the belly normally which is makes it very appealing as sashimi okay so uh, the tataki it normally comes out quite square as you can see. You can pull this section off here, you can see another seam, but I tend to leave it on. A little bit more fish for your money. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to skin this section of fish. When you're skinning fish make sure your board is really clean and really dry, otherwise any slime that's on the skin will end up on your fish, which is rubbish. That's the other side of the pin bones. I actually forgot to cut them out. I normally cut them out before I separate it off. Um, just drop these in the stock. Okay, so just give it a quick skinning. piece of kingfish skin. If you have a dog, my dog loves kingfish skin. Here, move! <whistles> yeah, she really loves kingfish skin. Yeah, it's the ta 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 oh, I can't even say it now. That's the tataki nearly done. All we need to do is trim off any of these bloodlines from it. Um, by bleeding it, you reduce this a lot. This one, I didn't bleed so good by the look of it. When you do them really well, you get very little of this bloodline. So with a clean knife, you just trim it away. Okay, that's pretty much it. It's the loin of the kingfish, which will turn into tataki. Uh, it comes out as pretty much a square, like a uh, yeah, square kind of shape, which makes cooking it a lot easier. Um, I haven't been too anal about taking off all of the bloodline pieces. It doesn't bother me too much. Put that away on this over the side. Again, if you've got a dog, dogs really like these bloodline bits. Well, mine does anyway. Blue dog! Now a bit of extra treat whenever you fill it a kingfish. It's this section here. You can, you can eat it as a shimmy. I find it a little bit tough. Um, you just peel the skin off it. Again, give it to your dog. 
And this bit I like to cut up in chunks, just small chunks. Yummy. Grab yourself a bowl. And it's all. Go to this one. Chuck it in your bowl. Go grab yourself. Um, some vinegar and I just use this bought lime juice. You can also do this on the boat with um, great with kawai, good with uh, yellowtail mackerel, fantastic if you live in the South Island with trumpeter. Uh, also, you can do this with cray tails if you're uh, got enough cray that you can do it with it. Um, so all I do is I use this magic vinegar, spice infused pickling vinegar. I think it's the best thing for it. Um, you can also cut an onion into this, but to be honest, I'm going to eat so much food that I don't need to fill myself up. And I put it in about two thirds of the way up of the fish in spice vinegar. And then a third with just this shop bought lime juice. You can use fresh limes to your heart's content. There you go. And that's it. If you set this aside, leave it for 10 minutes or so, the lime juice and the vinegar will cook the fish. And it comes out absolutely beautiful. It's a quick bite. Alright, so set that aside for 10 minutes. And I'll need a lot more than likely. So that's all our bits of fish cut up. So what we started with, some bits we're going to use to make our three things out of. So we'll start with the smoked tail. I'm just going to throw this again. You can go and watch the video on how to smoke fish. It's really easy. Okay, so very quickly, this is a uh, little short of two thirds brown sugar to one third salt, and to it we're going to add black pepper and dill, lots of, give it a good mix, if you've got cuts in your hands avoid it. And I'm going to cover the fish, leave it for 24 hours and then smoke it, again, watch the smoking video. Okay, I'm going to wipe that in the big fridge out the back to cure overnight. Alright, clean up again. So good. Mmm, well, we need a beer. Alright, now we'll do the next bit of the tataki. Need a plate. Your 
little piece of kingfish line. I just cut it in half to make it manageable. As you can see, the sashimi, it's beautiful. Uh, cut it in half to make it more manageable. And then all I do is a bit of soy, about that much. You can add a little bit of mirin if you want. Um, I like to, but you don't have to. You can also add a bit of sake as well if you have it. And just a little bit of lemon juice. Not that much, just a squeeze. And then I roll the fish in this marinade. Pour it over. Put that in the fridge for about 15 20 minutes. See you in 20 minutes. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Something around that anyway. Let me get out of the fridge. Okay, so marinade's penetrated a bit. It also helps to chill the fish down before you cook it like this. Um, if you've never had tataki before, it's essentially very fast cooked just on the outside to make a very thin cooked layer of fish around raw fish. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Okay, we'll get into it. So what you need is a cast iron or a non-stick pan that will fit these in comfortably that you can get nice and hot. Bad boy. Move you off for the minute. Just go here. Now I need that pan to be as hot as you cook a steak in, smoking hot. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but the pan has just started to smoke quite a lot. Um, you really want to push this as far as you can. Now it's really hot. So now we're going to cook the kingfish loins for six seconds a side. Six seconds a side. I've tried other numbers, but for some reason six always comes out right. Again, this is why I said it's quite handy that it comes out as a square piece of meat. It makes it nice and easy to cook it on all four sides. And I'll do one at a time and we'll count to six on each side. And that's it. Do the next one. Okay, bloody GoPro died, typically. So, uh, six seconds aside, and then all I did was put them straight into some glad wrap or cling film, rolled them up, and put them in the fridge for a few minutes just to set up. And then we'll slice one and show what it's like. The longer you leave it in the fridge, the firmer it sets, and when you slice it, you'll get less tearing of the cooked piece. All right, I'll slice it so you can see.
hopefully you can see on the outside it's just a little bit cooked give it a bit more flavor but the inside is essentially sashimi one of the most beautiful things mm. it's so good um, you can make this it'll last in the fridge two three days easy peasy if you wrap it up tight in glad wrap cling film um, and you can slice it thin and take it for your lunch on top of rice you can have it with a salad just eat it on its own it's nice with a bit of uh, soy and wasabi I just like it on its own to be honest but um, yeah very versatile thing just to keep munching away on for the next few days mm. Mm, so so good so I said a little bit of soy a little bit of mirim you can even just go and buy a pre-mixed teriyaki if you want to and put it on six seconds aside in a very hot pan and you come out with this and it's just beautiful it really is one of the nicest things that you can have off the kingfish mm. right we we'll wrap that up and get on to the next part okay the next bit the belly of the kingfish this bit I find is generally has the best flat <laughs> generally has the best fat um, quite a lot of favor flavor Jesus not talking well at the moment and uh, the least amount of the bloodlines of the fish as you can see it's quite thin doesn't go very deep um, which really lends itself to kind of baking it so I tried a lot of different ways and the best way I've ever found to do it is in potato Normandy which is a, a way of cooking potatoes in milk with onions um, uh, in, in the oven in like a casserole dish all I do is I add a layer of this uh, kingfish belly in there and it cooks it perfectly and it's an all-in-one pot meal um, you can cook it and you can eat it for a whole week it's one of my favorite things to do it's a journey okay so we'll get started you got your you deal with the fish first so you got your kingfish belly all I like to do is scrape all the scales off of it with a sharp knife this was a little big for the job with a sharp knife and um, get rid of the scales and nobody wants to eat scales okay but you want to leave the skin on the skin adds heaps and heaps of flavor into the dish so I'll just go ahead and do that okay here we go pretty much descaled I'm a little bit lazy about it to be honest kingfish scales are very very small I mean, you don't really notice them too much as long as you get most of them done and if you're buying it from a fishmonger then you can just ask them to do it for you okay nice okay so the other ingredients that we're going to use are going to be milk a bit of stock some onions and some potatoes a bit of flour and butter salt and pepper and a bit of dill that's it now I'm going to throw up the ingredients list if you want to pause it to write it down go ahead I'll also stick it in the description same as the tacky same as the stock all right oh stock's just about simmering Okay, now we're done the fish, we'll cut up our potatoes and onion. Um, we want to have them thinly sliced and as equal as possible. I'm going to use a mandolin to do that because it's really easy. If you haven't got to do it, if you haven't, if you haven't got a mandolin, just cut them up with a knife. You know, just make sure they're thin and kind of same kind of width. Okay. Oh. Preheat your oven, 180 odd degrees. Oh. 
quite thin, quite thin pieces. I think it was about three large potatoes, something like that. Cut pretty thin, pretty thin. If they're a bit thicker, it doesn't really matter. Might do one more for luck. Better to have more than less. Yeah. Okay, second onion. Oniony. Okay, there's the side. Now for your potatoes, a bit of salt. About that much. Whoa. Then we're going to throw a bit of flour in there as well. Any old flour will do. I want to toss the potatoes in the flour to make sure they're all really well covered. This, bit, this flour ends up acting as the thickener to make the sauce all congeal together on the potatoes. Okay, so fish. First of all, we're going to grease this dish down with some butter. Okay, lovely. So now we'll just cut the fish up into some more manageable pieces. So this big ish. Okay, and then we're going to go a layer of potatoes. And we want it to be a good base on the bottom. Again, making sure there's plenty of flour on the spuds. Spud! Spud! And a layer of onions. And a layer of fish. Oh, I forgot the dill. A little bit of dill goes a long way, I find. And then a couple of knobs of butter. You can break them into little bits and dot them around the place. Another layer of spud.
Oh, that's completely covered over the fish. A layer of onion. More butter. It's good for you, honest. Say so all up, it's about 50 grams of butter. A bit more dill. And then the last of the spuds, again making sure that they're all covered in the butter, in the, in the flour. Okay, now we're going to add our milk. You can use cream if you want to. I'll just use milk. It's always got milk. I've always got cream. Um, and into that milk, I'm going to add some stock. You can use chicken stock. It's quite nice with that. Uh, fish stock. If you're clever enough, you could make the fish stock and then do add it into there if you want. But then to find it's fishy enough just with the belly in it. Um, I tend to use vegetable stock. Sometimes I use one vegetable stock cube and one chicken stock cube. It really depends what I have. As long as you don't use beef, I think you'll be okay. So, two stock cubes. Really, I've never measured how much milk I put in. I would say a bit short of three to 400 mils. So, as you can see, well, maybe a touch too much, it's, you want it about just over a third of the way up, towards half of the way up, the inside, filled with milk. I don't know if you can see that. And then, what we're going to do is cover it, and we're going to cook it in the oven for about an hour. Yeah, about an hour, and then we'll come back and check on it. And then if it's looking good and the potatoes are all cooked through or very close to being cooked through, then we'll uncover it and cook it for another half an hour. All right, I'm going to cover it and chuck it in the oven. I'll see you in an hour. Okay, it's been about an hour, maybe a little bit more. I've been doing stuff. Um, we'll get it out of the oven and take a look, see if it's um, all cooked through. That looks dreamy. I hope it's not fogging up the camera. I would say that looks done to me. Oh, pretty close. As I said, when, it's, when all the spuds are pretty much done, fish will be done. So now, I just want to put it back in the oven about another half an hour, just to reduce it down. The top's going to go a little bit darker, caramelize up a bit, and um, then we'll be there. So I'll chuck it back in for half an hour. I'll come back in half an hour and show you how it's finished. All right, alarm's just gone off. It's been about another half an hour. Let's have a looky. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right. That's dreamy. As you can see, it's pretty much molten lava at the moment. Don't think I'd be eating it, unless you want to lose your tongue. So I'm going to cool down 10-15 minutes and then we'll cut into it and have a look. Mmm, hungry. Alright, she's done. Happy days. Okay, let's get this. Get some out. Hungry ass. Where's me? That'll do.
tell you, that is a plate of buttery, fishy spudness. Oh, I'm going to eat it. I'm too hungry. I hope you try making it at home. Cheers.